Trials, the biggest Hey, what's up you guys? Shortimus Prime here doing another SH Monster Arts figure review on the SH Monster Arts Alien vs Predator Heavy Armored version of the Predator Wolf. Gotta give a big thanks to Theron for making this review possible and sending this out to me. Really, really appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. If you've been wanting me to review this figure for a while, you have Theron to thank. Anyway, if you're trying to get this figure yourself, you can get a big, 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 big. Get your big, badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. So get this window box packaging over here. We get some purple splattered all over the place right there on the top. And then we get the Predator Wolf right there on the side. Then you can see some poses right there on the back. Movable optional parts molding. Anyway, let's get to it and crack this thing open. So here's a figure out of the packaging. And not only do I have to thank Theron for the awesome figure, but it actually made me watch Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I had seen the first Alien vs. Predator movie. Uh, this figure right here is from the sequel, Requiem. And it is an awesome movie. Me and the wife had a great time watching this flick. And this figure is amazing. Oh my god. You see Wolf, I guess that's the name of the Predator. His name is Wolf. Uh, you just see him use a ton of weapons in the movie and it's just really awesome uh, having this fully armed version with all the gear. I don't know what's missing from the other version, but let's take a look at all the accessories and then we'll take a closer look at Wolf. The figure comes with five pairs of interchangeable hands plus one extra acid pouring hand over here. We get fisted hands. We get these tight gripping hands, which I think are for the whip. Uh, we get this hand right over here that's for holding his gun, I believe. And then we get these cutter holding hands and then we get these wide open palm hands. And looking at one of these closely, I really like the paint variation on this. That looks really great in the silver area. I like the reptilian dots painted on over here. Really nice sculpting in the inside of the hand. All of these look great. I really like that shading look on the right side. These are really cool. Even some nice sculpt in the nails. <laughs> Look at all the weapons. All right, first off, he has that sick whip right over there. I think that is the coolest whip ever. And then he has a retracted version right over there where it's all coiled up. Uh, he has his two shoulder cannons or plasma cannons over there. Uh, they have two points of articulation on them. You can see this one's extended. This one's folded up. He has his handgun. He has his little vial of acid, which I guess refills whenever he puts it in the little pouch. He has his two opened cutters right there. You have the two closed ones. He has his right hand claws. So these are the ones where it's just regular. These are the extended ones right there that you could replace. And then he has his spear. You have the extended version right over there. And then you have the one that he holsters on his back. There is some great detail in the sculpt and paint on all of these accessories. I wish this had a bendy wire in it, but it is still very cool. And here's the coiled up one, also sculpted and painted very well. And this does have a peg sticking out of it, so you can attach it to his right hip. You can see they each plug in nicely right there on his back. And you can fold this all the way down. That looks cool. God, the amount of detail right there in the cutters. Jeez, these are awesome. And they're all very sharp and pointy. I like them a lot. And get that right there in the cutter through hands. And you can take both of these closed cutters and just attach them to these little hooks right there on the side. I think there's a little film inaccurate because in the movie you see him place them both on each side. There's no holster or anything for the gun but it does look awesome. You get those little blades coming out right there and they can be extended so you just see these two blades right here like pretty cool. All you got to do is say snick Pretty cool. I like that. These look very nice. I really like this little acid vial accessory. This is really cool. I really did think it was weird though that he just never ran out of it though. And then you can put it in this little pouch right there and that holds very nicely. I think this is looking very cool. I love the sculpted detail in here. I love this gold paint. These are very sharp right here. And you can store this right on his back. There's a peg hole right over there and just push that right in and it can hold securely. An extended spear looks even cooler, man. Wow. This is an awesome head sculpt. I love the sculpt sculpting on this piece. Look at those beady eyes. Oh, that is so cool. He's missing his one little mandible right over there, as he should. I like how his uh, predator dreads right here are all kind of made out of a pliable material. You can see they all have these rivets sculpted in there. You can move them around and it doesn't hinder any articulation over there. I think that is really cool. I think the paint could have come out here a little smoother coming into this section. This is really bright compared to this area over here. But still, I really like how the paint looks. So you get a lot of color variation in here. This whole crest right here at the top of his head looks great. The sculpting is just very, very impressive, and the inside of his mouth, too. Oh, that is gnarly. Oh, that's so cool. Now, you can interchange these mandibles so you can plug them out right there, and you swap them out with these ones right here so he's screaming. I really love the attention to detail for the inside of the mouth of this thing. That is just too cool. Then the last accessory is this interchangeable head where you have the masked predator. Oop, there goes a mandible, but we can remove that. So getting this other head sculpt on here was not fun, but I was able to manage to do it. It is a little tricky, but not the worst thing, especially 
especially because of these spines coming out of the top over here. But look at the sculpt on this thing. It is incredible. I love the paint on it too. This really looks like it's made out of cast iron, which I think is a very accurate look for this. I just think this is really awesome. You can even look underneath right there. They kept painting, you know, the chin and sculpted all of that. I love the scratches and indentations in here. You can see they used a black color to fill that in. I love the little skulls right there on the necklace. And he has a sash right over here with these Claymore mines attached to him, and they are removable, so you can take those off if you want to. Those are very cool. I love this reptilian skin. Ah, oh, it's so well detailed and painted so damn well. Really like looking at this over here. Looking at this side, he actually has this little control panel, which it would have been nice if they had put some red in here, some really bright red, but still, that looks really dope. I like that a lot. Closes up very nicely. You can see the top of it right over there. Maybe this part was supposed to have the red. No, I'm pretty sure it was the inside. But anyway, looking at this little shoulder piece, again, very, very, very cool. Again, some great sculpting over here. I really like this piece right here on his back. That is awesome. Loving that bronze color again. Very shiny, very metallic looking. This underpiece of the forearm looks very cool. Get some nice paint variation right over here too. Damn, man. The legs look great. Dang. These have got little pieces coming off just because I keep spinning the figure around. These little parts are awesome. Now his kneecaps, this is my biggest complaint about the figure is the kneecaps do pop off somewhat easily, but they're sculpted and painted very nicely. And looking at the legs, all this line work in here. These are amazing. Damn, this is just an amazing figure. I'm very impressed with this. Those pretty toes, oh, it looks so nice. Nothing really going on at the bottom of the feet, but looking at the back of the figure over here, I like these little spines right there sculpted on his calves. Nice paint shading right there. This is just incredible. Oh yeah, predator butt. What? He's got a thong. Now this guy has a ton of articulation. You can move his head up a reasonable amount. I think that's pretty good. Wow. And you can get him to look down. His head does rotate side to side and you do get the neck pivot over here. His shoulder pad can rotate forward and back and it does hinge up and down. It does have a little ball joint. Just peg it right back in there if it comes detached. Uh, the shoulders can move outward that much. They can rotate forward. They also have an armpit joint that moves in and out and up and down. You get rotation at the bicep right there. He has double jointed elbows, so they go all the way in. He does have rotation at the wrists, and the wrists can move up and down depending on where that hinge is. He has a diaphragm joint that can rotate side to side, and he does crunch forward and back very well, and you do get some diaphragm pivot. You get some waist swivel right over there, and you get waist pivot, and it does crunch forward and back at the waist as well. Wow, a lot of articulation over there. Now if you look right past this taint over here, you can see that this hinge is supposed to allow movement to go up and down, but it's not really letting the leg do that for some reason. I don't know why and I don't want to force it and it looks like this little piece can move side to side if you want to. But other than that, the hips can move outward that much and they can kick forward. He does have upper thigh swivel as well. Double jointed knees that bend in that much. The ankles don't really move down that much. They move up more so. He does have toe articulation just a little bit and he does have beautiful ankle pivot. Now this Predator figure stands just a little over 7 inches tall. Here he is next to the SH Monster Arts Alien Big Chap, and then we have the NECA Stealth Predator. And then here he is next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. I mean, so again, I think this figure is awesome. I highly recommend it for any Predator fan, and I gotta give a big thanks again to Theron for making this review possible. Thanks so much, man. I love this figure. Anyway, I hope you guys liked my video. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, subscribe if you haven't already, and check out ToyNewsEye.com for a photo gallery of images, and check out ShardimusPrime.net for the daily blog. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Put the everyday display, gave it a spark. Welcome to articulated comic book art. Oh, uh, you know, this little contra... Ah, damn it. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. Yeah, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yep, go ahead and click that damn thing if you haven't already. Or if you already did, check out one of the videos below. I'm sure you haven't seen both of them, huh? Click them, click them, click them, click them, click them, click them.